بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وبه نستعين وصلي اللهم وبارك على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وبارك وسلم وسلم تسليما كثيرا أما بعد أيها الإخوة والأخوات respected brothers and sisters in Islam السلام عليكم ورحمة الله تعالى وبركاته we praise Allah subhanahu wa taala we seek his divine aid we seek his assistance we must ever Allah azza wa jal guides and can misguide and we must ever Allah azza wa jal misguides and can guide I be witness that none has the right to be worshipped except Allah Azza wa Jal alone without any partner. And I testify that Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is his final prophet and messenger. As what proceeds that we say to you, Ahlan wa sahlan wa marahaban bikum. Welcome to each and every single one of you to our lesson bi'idhnillah. And that is the messenger of Allah Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam as if you can see him. And this class primarily focuses on the sunnah of the Prophet Alaihi Salatu Wasallam. The actions of the Prophet, peace be upon him, his statements, his akhlaq and his adab alayhi salatu wassalam. And in this class we aim to familiarize ourselves with this aspect of the Prophet Muhammad alayhi salatu wassalam's life. And it is not a class which deals with the seerah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam. So the aim of this class is to familiarize ourselves and yourselves with the lifestyle of the Prophet Muhammad والسلام, with the hope that we follow him in terms of the way he worshipped Allah in terms of the way he interacted with the rest of the creation and so indeed as Allah Azrael says لَقَدَ كَانَ لَكُمْ فِي رَسُولِ اللَّهِ أُسْوَةٌ حَسَنَةٌ لِمَنْ كَانَ يَرْجُ اللَّهَ وَالْيَوْمَ الْآخِرَةِ وَذَكَرَ اللَّهَ كَثِيرًا that indeed in the Messenger of Allah Alayhi salatu wassalam, do you find a good example? For the one who fears Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he fears the last day and he remembers Allah azza wa jal much. Those are the individuals who find an excellent example in the Prophet Muhammad alayhi salatu wassalam. And this verse, it is a foundational verse with regards to encouraging us to take the Prophet Muhammad sallam, as a reference point with regards to coming closer towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and so this is the objective of the class then we learn the various aspects of the sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu not to make us feel as if we cannot reach that status but rather to encourage us to know the sunnah and to practice upon it bi'idhnillah and so uh, we started off last week with the first part of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu day and that was the period which occurs before Fajr and we discussed um, the first thing the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi did was that he remembered Allah Azza wa Jal with the prescribed morning uh, remembrances and the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam then rinsed his nose and he washed his hands before he immersed it into the utensil for wudu he performed wudu and we discussed the various sunan of wudu and some of its virtues and now we've reached the point wherein the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu will now engage in the night prayer. So what was the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu guidance with regards to the night prayer? So firstly, what is the best time to perform Salatul Witr? What is the best time to perform Salatul Witr? And the answer is, it is known that the best time to perform this uh, although time period for the for the salah of witr is from the time after Isha up until Fajr. So this is the time period wherein we have to perform salah al witr From after Isha up until the waqt of Fajr. Up until the waqt of Fajr enters, this is the time period that we have to pray salah al witr And so what teaches us this is the hadith reported in Bukhari and Muslim wherein Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha she said kana rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam yusalli fi ma bayna ay yafruga min salat al isha ila al fajr ihda ashrata raka'atan yusallim bayna kulli raka'atayn wa yutiru bi wahidatin muttafaqun alayh so she said and this is her reporting the intimate actions of the prophet muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam that no other person would have known of because said that Aisha was the wife of the prophet and she lived with him. And so she mentioned that the Prophet ﷺ used to pray 
from the time of after Isha up until Fajr. So after Isha up until Fajr, Ihda Ashrata Raka'atan. He would pray 11 Raka'at. Yusallimu bayna kulli Raka'atayni. The Prophet also would do Taslim between each and every single two units of prayer. Wa yutiru bi wahidatin. And he would perform one witr. And so this teaches us the time period of Salat al-Witr. It is from the time of after Isha up until Fajr. Up until Fajr. Another hadith which is also reported by Sayyidina Aisha, which Bukhari and Muslim reports, is that she said, Radiallahu ta'ala anha, min, min kulli layli qad awtara Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, min awwali layli wa awsatihi wa akhirihi, fanta witru ila sahar. Taib. So, she mentioned that each and every single night the Prophet also performed witr. So he never ever left off the witr prayer. And sometimes he would pray it in the first part of the night, sometimes in the middle part of the night, and sometimes at the last part of the night. Fantaha witruhu ila sahar. And the Prophet Sallallahu witr would end in the period of sahar. In Ramadan we have suhoor, the pre-dawn meal. So the Prophet Sallallahu would stop his witr prayer just at that time, the time of sahar. About this, the great scholar Ibn Mundir Rahimullah Ta'ala said, وَأَجْمَعُ عَلَىٰ أَنَّ مَا بَيْنَ صَلَاةِ الْعِشَاءِ إِلَىٰ تُلُوِ الْفَجْرِ وَقْتٌ لِلْوِتْرِ He said that the scholars have unanimously agreed upon the fact that the time for witr is between Isha and dawn, right from the time um, just before Fajr, yani the waqt, before the waqt of Fajr enters. This is the time period for Salat al-Witr and the scholars have unanimous agreement upon this fact. The next mas'ala which comes up, it is what is the best time to perform the night prayer? And the best time to perform the night prayer is in the last third of the night after half of the night has passed. In the last third of the night, after half the night has passed. And so, what teaches us this is the hadith of Abdullah ibn Amr, wherein he said that the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, said, Inna ahabba siyami ilallahi siyamu Dawood, that the most beloved form of fasting is the fasting of Nabi Dawood alayhi salatu wasalam. Wa ahabbu salati ilallah. And the most beloved prayer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is Salatu Dawood, is the prayer of Dawood alayhi salatu wasalam. So what was the method of the fasting and the prayer of Nabi Dawood? Kana yanama nisfa layl He alayhi salatu wasalam used to sleep for the first half of the night. Wa yakumu thulutha And he would stand up for a third of the night, meaning after half of the night passed, we then divide the night into three parts for the last part of the night. And so he would stand for a third of the last part of the night. And he would sleep يعني, in the last sixth of the night. And he would fast one day and he would break his fast, meaning he would not fast another day. So this is the best prayer and the best of fasting which is the practice of a noble prophet, Nabi Dawood alayhi salatu wasalam. So if a person wants to practice upon this, how will he determine the night? Okay. So this scholar, um, he's of the opinion that the night begins from the time the sun sets. So after Maghrib, the sun sets, you work out the time period, how many hours there is between um, the time of Maghrib and the time of Fajr. And then you divide it into, you divide it into half. So we'll get two halves. The second half will divide into three parts. And so the best time to pray is in the second half of the night. The second half of the night. And so the person can either stand in the first part of the second half of the night or the second um, third of the night. This is the best time to perform the night prayer. 
And when the person uh, establishes the night prayer in this manner, he also comprehends the time of Allah Azza wa Jal's divine descent, where Allah Subhanahu wa Taala descends to the lowest heaven, Subhanahu wa Taala, in a manner which befits His Majesty, because we affirm all of the attributes of Allah Azza wa Jal, as has come in the Quran and the Sunnah, without likening it to the creation. So we believe in this because the hadith is authentic and we'll discuss the hadith soon and so we affirm this attribute that Allah Azza wa Jal descends at this time, the last third of the night and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala um, says who from amongst my servants is calling upon me so I may respond to him who my servants is seeking my forgiveness so I may forgive them and so on and so forth so this is the blessed time of the night so when the person stands up in the second half of the night the person also comprehends um, this noble waqt, this noble time where Allah Azza wa Jal descends. And so, um, the best prayer, it is the prayer of Nabi Dawood. Because he used to sleep for half the night and he would establish prayer for a third of the second half of the night and he would sleep in the last sixth of the night as the hadith affirms. So, when it comes to the night prayer, there is a time period which is considered to be the best time period for the night prayer. And that is to establish a night prayer after the second half of the night. To establish the night prayer in the second half of the night. And so the person, after half the night has transpired, the person we mentioned should divide the night into three parts thereafter. So the best time for the person to stand in night prayer would be in the first or the second part of the last half of the night. Type. And this is the best time to establish night prayer. And the last part, the last third of the night, the person should get rest. Because this was the practice of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And the scholars give numerous reasons for this. They mention that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam slept during that part of the night. So you could approach the Fajr prayer with renewed energy and you could also remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in a good frame of mind and a good state and so this is established in the hadith of Abdullah ibn Umar ibn al-As which we mentioned previously the second level is that the person stands up in the night in the last third of the night and what is indicative of this is the hadith of Abu Hurairah that the Prophet Muhammad والسلام, said ينزل ربنا تبارك وتعالى كل ليلة إلى السماء الدنيا حين يبقى ثلث الليل الآخر فيقول من يدعوني فأستجيب له ومن يسألني فأؤتيه ومن يستغفرني فأغفر له So the Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him he said that Allah Azza wa Jal descends to the lowest heaven when the last third of the night remains. Fayaqul. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he says, Who is supplicating to me? So I may respond to his supplications. Who is seeking a need from me? So I may fulfill his need. And who is seeking my forgiveness? So I may forgive him. And so this is a blessed time of the night that a Muslim should take advantage of. Because we all have needs, we all have wants and the time to take advantage of this is during the last third of the night because this is a time where Allah Azza wa Jal descends to the lowest heaven in a manner befitting His Majesty Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala and Allah Azza wa Jal says who is supplicating to me so I may respond to him who is seeking a need for me so I may fulfill his need and who is seeking my forgiveness so I may forgive him so any believer who has a du'a which he wants um, to be responded to, any believer who is seeking something which he wants to be fulfilled, and any believer who is seeking forgiveness for his sins should take advantage of this time of the night. And if the person um, has needs and he has wants, and he wants his du'as to be responded to and he wants his sins to be forgiven, but he doesn't take advantage of this time of the night and this is a sign that the person doesn't really desire 
those things. And so um, this is the second best time to stand, right? Which is in the last third of the night. The last third of the night. And then finally, the third level of standing up in the night prayer. It is to pray in any part of the night after Isha. For the person who fears that he cannot stand up in the last third of the night, then the person should take advantage of any time of the night to pray what is ev whatever is easy for him so that he can say he fulfilled that sunnah. So that he can say he fulfilled that sunnah. And this is affirmed in the hadith of Jabir radiallahu anhu when he said the Prophet peace be upon him said Man khafa an la yakuma min akhiri layli fal yutir awwala wa man tamia an yakuma akhirahu فَلْيُوتِرْ آخِرَ اللَّيْلِ فَإِنَّ صَلَاةِ الْآخِرِ اللَّيْلِ مَشْهُودَةٌ وَذَلِكَ أَفْضَلٌ The Prophet peace be upon him said Whosoever fears that he will not stand up in the last part of the night then let him perform witr in the first part of the night and he mentions alayhi salatu wa salam and whosoever has an intention and he desires to stand up in the last part of the night then let him perform his witr in the last part of the night and the Prophet gives a reasoning and he says فَإِنَّ صَلَاةَ آخِرِ اللَّيْلِ مَشْهُودَةٌ because prayer in the last part of the night it is witnessed it is مَشْهُودَةٌ it is witnessed by who? by the noble Malaika it is witnessed by the angels وَذَلِكَ أَفْضَلْ and the Prophet says and that is best so the best time to establish this is in the last part of the night but if you fear that you cannot stand up in the last part of the night then take advantage of the first part of the night to pray the night prayer and this also is established in the advices which the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu gave to Abi Dhar to Abi Darda and to Abi Huraira anhum. and all the wording of this advice is as follows أوصاني خليلي بثلاثة that my close and intimate companion رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم advised me with three things. طيب and from amongst this uh, they mentioned وأن أوتر قبل أن أنام that I perform the witr prayer before I go to bed. and so this is the importance of the witr prayer that the Prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم he gave his companions this advice as a personal advice and as extension he also gave this advice to the Ummah and they said in explicit wording awsani khalili bi thalath that my close and intimate companion Rasulullah Sallallahu gave me this advice and one of the advices was that I perform the witr prayer before I go to bed at night if you fear that you cannot establish it in the last part of the night secondly what is the sunnah with regards to praying the night prayer? How much raka'at did Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam pray? The most complete hadith which gives us an understanding of how much raka'at the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa prayed in the night prayer is the hadith of Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha reported in Bukhari and Muslim and she said مَا كَانَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ يَزِيدُ فِي رَمَضَانَ وَلَا فِي غَيْرِهِ عَلَى إِحْدَى أَشْرَةَ رَكَعَةً She said that the Prophet ﷺ did not increase in Ramadan وَلَا فِي غَيْرِهِ no outside of Ramadan عَلَى إِحْدَى أَشْرَةَ رَكَعَةً the Prophet ﷺ did not increase more than 11 raka'at inside of Ramadan and outside of Ramadan alayhi salatu was salam and there's other narrations that also mention that the Prophet sallam used to establish 13 raka'at thalatha ashrata raka'atan and this has been reported in Muslim also by Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha when she said kana rasulullah sallam yusalli min al-layli thalatha ashrata raka'atan يُوتِرُ مِنْ ذَلِكَ بِخَمْسٍ لَا يَجْلِسُ فِي شَيْءٍ إِلَّا فِي آخِرِهَا That the Prophet Muhammad 
um, he prayed during the night prayer 13 rakaat and from this 13 rakaat he would perform 5 rakaat of witr la yajlisu fi shayin illa fi akhiriha and during this 5 rakaat he would not sit yani uh, for tashahud except at the end meaning in the 5th rakaat this is also one of the methods of performing salat al witr so the scholars differ with regards to the narration that mentions Thalatha Ashra Raka'atan 13 Raka'ah and they differ with regards to understanding this hadith because Sayyidina Aisha also reported in the previous narration that the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, did not increase um, more than 11 Raka'at inside of Ramadan nor outside so how do they gather between these two ahadith? Some scholars mention that the extra two raka'at which the Prophet also prayed to make it 13, it was the sunnah of Isha. This is an opinion. Other scholars have mentioned um, what is meant by 13 raka'at. It is the sunnah, the two raka'at of Fajr. So this is one interpretation. Other scholars have also mentioned that it is two um, units of prayer which the Prophet Muhammad والسلام, would open his night prayer with. Before the Prophet actually engage in the night prayer, he would start off the night prayer with two, yani, as they mentioned, raka'atani khafifatan, yani, a short prayer before he actually engaged in the night prayer. So some scholars say that this sunnah is the sunnah that the Prophet would pray before engaging in the night prayer. And this was two raka'at, which was very, very short. Which was very, very short. And this is the opinion of the great muhaddith, Ibn Hajar, rahimahullah, he ta'ala. Naam. So, um, the third um, matter with regards to the night prayer. Before the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, actually engaged in the night prayer, he would perform um, two raka'at and this would be very very short in comparison to the Prophet establishing the night prayer and we'll get to the actual yani, modality and sifa of the Prophet night prayer and um, this is confirmed in the hadith um, of Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha when she said كان رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم إذا قام من الليل ليصلي افتتح صلاته بركعتين خفيفتين. She mentioned that when the Messenger of Allah عليه الصلاة والسلام um, when he wanted to establish the night prayer when he got up to stand for the night prayer he would open up his prayer بركعتين خفيفتين. He would open up his prayer with two units of يعني a short prayer. Type so he would first establish two raka'at before he actually engaged in the night prayer. Thereafter, how did the Prophet Muhammad open his prayer? He would open his prayer with numerous supplications, which is becoming of us to learn that when we actually establish the sunnah, when we establish it the way the Prophet Muhammad used to do it. And so the Prophet, peace be upon him, uh, once he made his takbir, he would then open up his prayer with certain supplications. We know for the daily prayers there is a certain supplication which the Prophet Muhammad used to make. And so when the Prophet established the night prayer, there were certain supplications he would open up his night prayer with. From amongst him is that which has been reported by Sayyidina Aisha in Sahih Muslim that she said, uh, that the Prophet وسلم, used to open up his salah with the following supplication Allahumma Rabba Jibra'il wa Mika'il wa Israfil Fatiri Samawati wal Ard Alim al Ghaybi wa Shahada Anta Tahkumu Baina Ibadika Fi Makanu Fi Yachtalifun Ihdini Limachtulifa Fihi Min al Haqi Bi Idnik Inna Katahdi Mantashau Ila Siratim Mustaqim so let's look more closely at the meaning of the supplication which the Prophet opened up his night prayer with which was one of the supplications. The Prophet said O oh Allah, the Rabb of Jibra'il 
Jibril and Mikael and Israfil, Fatir al Samawati wal Ard, the originator of the heavens and the earths, Alim al Ghaybi wa Shahada, the knower of the unseen and that which is seen, that which is witnessed. Anta tahkumu bayna ibadika fi makanu fi yaktalifun. You will judge between your servants with regard to that which they have differed in. Ihdini di makhtulifa fihi min al haqqi bi idnik. Guide me to the correct, um, guide me to the truth with regards to what they have differed regards. Bi idnika, by your leave. إِنَّكَ تَهْدِي مَنْ تَشَاءُ إِلَى صِرَاطِ مُسْتَقِيمٍ For indeed you guide whomsoever you will to the straight path. And so the Prophet ﷺ, he opened up his night prayer with this application. Um, another supplication which the Prophet Muhammad ﷺ opened up his night prayer with was that which has been reported in Bukhari and Muslim in the hadith of Ibn Abbas that he said that the Prophet, peace be upon him, إِذَا Tahajjada bin al-layli qal. When the Prophet ﷺ uh, performed tahajjud at night time, he said, Allahumma laka alhamdu anta nuru samawati wal ard. Oh Allah, to you belongs all hamd, to you belongs all praises, subhanahu wa ta'ala, anta nuru samawati wal ard. You are the light of the heavens and the earth. Wa laka alhamdu anta qayyimu samawati wal ard. And to you belongs all praises. You are the sustainer of the heavens and the earth. Walakal hamd. And to you is all praise. Anta rabbu samawati wal ard wa man fihin. You are the rabb of absolutely everything in the heavens and the earth wa man fihin and whatever is in it. Anta al haqqu. You are al haqq. You are the absolute truth. Wa wa'aduka al haqq. Your promise is true. وَكَوْلُكَ الْحَقِّ Your statement is true. The Qur'an is true. وَلِقَاءُكَ الْحَقِّ Meeting with you in the year after. It is the truth. وَالْجَنَّةُ حَقِّ The Jannah is the truth. وَالنَّارُ حَقٌ The hellfire is a reality. It is truth. وَالنَّبِيُّونَ حَقٌ And the prophets are truth. وَالسَّاعَةُ حَقٌ The hour it is a reality and it is the truth. Allahumma laka aslamtu. O Allah, to you I have submitted. Wa bika amantu. And in you I believe. Wa alayka tawakkaltu. And upon you I placed my trust. Wa ilayka anabtu. And to you I turn in repentance. Wa bika khasamtu. And to you I complain. Wa ilayka hakamtu. And to you I turn as and to you I turn to as a judge. فَغْفِرْ لِي مَا قَدَّمْتُ So forgive me that which has preceded وَمَا أَخَرْتُ And that which will, which will come وَمَا أَسْرَرْتُ And that which I do in secret وَمَا أَعْلَنْتُ And that which I do in open أَنْتَ إِلَهِ لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا أَنْتْ You are my deity of worship لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا أَنْتْ None has the right to be worshipped except you. So these are the two supplications which the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam he opened his night prayer with. So we should make an intention to learn the spirit of when we wish to establish the night prayer the way the Messenger of Allah والسلام, established it. The next matter in relation to the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu night prayer was that what was the actual sifa of his night prayer The Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu he used to stand for a very very lengthy time and a long time in Qiyam and his Ruku and his Sujood would all be equal and so the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu in some narrations it is reported that when he stood in the night prayer SubhanAllah he would stand and he would recite Surah Al-Baqarah Surah Al-Imran and Surah Al-Nisa before going into Ruku and his Ruku would be as long as his recitation SubhanAllah and so this was the way the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu worshipped Allah Azza wa Jal. And this is the modality of his night prayer. That the sunnah is that a person, he increases in the length of his standing and his ruku and his sujood. 
and all of these um, it must be a similar length this is the actual method of the night prayer according to the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu actions another matter which comes up with relation to the establishment of the night prayer the way the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu did it it is that the person he comes with all of the sunan which the Prophet Sallallahu did in his night prayer so firstly the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu would not read in a hasty manner he would not rush, rush his recitation right the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu he would stop in between each and every single ayah and he would not join in between the ayah so the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu would recite and he would recite in a slow manner and we, when he Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam recited he would he would separate between each and every single ayah and he would not join between the ayat so he would not join between the ayat and this is based upon uh, the narration in the Musnad of Imam Ahmad um, in the hadith of Umm Salama that she said Annaha su'ilat an kira'ati Rasulillah that she was asked regarding the recitation of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu in the night prayer فقالت, so she said كان يقطع قراءته آية آية that the Prophet Sallallahu would separate between the verses he would read verse by verse Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and so she gives an example of this بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين and that's the, the way she described it so not Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen ar-Rahman ar-Rahim Malik Yawm al-Din but rather the Prophet Sallallahu would stop in between each and every single verse he would stop in between each and every single verse another sunnah of the night prayer is that the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu whenever he came across a verse wherein there was the glorification and praise of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he would stop and he would praise Allah and when he came across a verse which encouraged asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then he would ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for that thing and when he came across a verse wherein there was seeking refuge with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu would seek refuge with Allah azza wa jal and thereafter uh, the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu would go through his prayer in that manner so when he came to glorification of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala in the Quran the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu would then glorify Allah when he came across a verse wherein they was asking Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala for his bounties he would then ask Allah Azza wa Jal for his bounties when he came across verses wherein they were seeking refuge with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he would seek refuge with Allah azza wa jal and this is the way the Prophet would go through his entire night prayer alayhi salatu wassalam the next um, sunnah of the night prayer is that we mentioned in the beginning that Sayyidina Aisha said the Prophet Muhammad made taslim in between each and every single two units of prayer so the Prophet also prayed his night prayer in two units Taib. and this is affirmed in the hadith of Ibn Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhuma um, that he said that he said qama rajulun faqala ya rasulullah kayfa salatul layl so a person stood up and he asked the messenger of Allah alayhi salatu salam what is the method of the night prayer the Prophet Muhammad alayhi salatu wassalam responded to him by saying Salatul layli mathna mathna fa idha khifta as subha fa utir bi wahidatin That the Prophet peace be upon him said Salatul layl is done in units of two or in pairs of two fa idha khifta as subha and if you fear the approach of the Fajr prayer and the waqt of Fajr fa utir bi wahidatin then perform one witr so this is the method of the night prayer it is masna masna meaning a person prays it in units of two 
and it does not join between two units, meaning praying four raka'ah. So this is the method of the night prayer, that a person prays it in units of two. What also affirms this is the hadith of Aisha, radiallahu anha, when she says, كان رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم يصلي فيما بين أن يفرغ من صلاة الإشاء إلى الفجر إحدى أشرة ركعة يسلم بين كل ركعتين ويوتر بواحدة The hadith which you mentioned um, in the beginning that the Prophet also used to pray between the time of Isha and Fajr 11 raka'at and he would make taslim in between every two units and used to perform one Raka'a of Witr alayhi salatu wassalam. Another um, sunnah of the night prayer and specifically Salat al Witr is that when the person closes his night prayer, he ends it off with Witr. So, what must he read in the Witr prayer? It is reported that the Prophet Muhammad alayhi salatu wassalam he read Surah Al A'la in the first Raka'a. So, the Prophet would read Sabbih Isma Rabbika Al-A'la in the first Raka'ah. In the second Raka'ah, the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu he would read Surah Al-Kafirun, Kul Ya Ayyuha Al-Kafirun. And in the third Raka'ah, the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu would read Kul Huwa Allahu Ahad. This has been reported from the Messenger of Allah alayhi salatu wassalam. And this is affirmed in the Hadith of Abu Dawood. In the Hadith of Ubay ibn Ka'ab, radiallahu ta'ala anhu, that he said, كان رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم يوتر بسبح اسم ربك الأعلى وقل يا أيها الكافر وقل هو الله وأحد So when we establish the winter prayer at night, these are the suwar which must be read. Especially if a person is praying the winter in three raka'at. The person should read Surah Al-A'la, Al Surah Al-Kafir and um, قل هو الله أحد. So these are the sunnahs um, or the suwar which is prescribed for us to read in the bitter prayer. The next sunnah of the bitter prayer is that the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, he would do the qunut sometimes in his bitter prayer. The Prophet وسلم, would do the qunut sometimes in the bitter prayer. And the meaning of qunut it is dua. It is du'a. And this du'a takes place in the third raka'ah. It takes place in the third raka'ah and the scholars differ um, whether one does it before he goes into ruku or coming up. Nonetheless, this refers to the kunut. And this was the practice of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu that he would do the kunut at certain times. He would do this at certain times. And so this is based upon um, a hadith which describes the method of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam's prayer, which has been reported by Aisha, Umm Salama, and Ibn Abbas, as well as Ibn Mas'ud. Taib. That this has all been mentioned by these noble companions. However, um, when it comes to this issue, is that the Prophet ﷺ did witr and when he performed his witr he would do the kunut this was sometimes however all of the companions that reported the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu witr prayer they never ever mentioned that the Prophet Sallallahu did witr in his kunut prayer and so um, Ibn Taymiyyah is of the opinion that a person he leaves it off more often than what he does it. So meaning, sometimes in the winter prayer, we should do the kunut, and at other times we should leave it off. But we should leave it off more often than what we actually do it, because all of the narrations which we mentioned previously, which describes the prayer of the Messenger of Allah والسلام, it does not mention that the Prophet did winter therein. So here comes up an issue which the Sheikh brings and he mentions is the kunut established uh, in the witr in the statements of the Prophet وسلم, or his actions? Is it established in the statements of Rasulullah وسلم, 
or is it established in his actions? And the first opinion is that it is established in both the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu statements and actions. Firstly, in his action, it is the hadith of Ubay ibn Ka'b when the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu said, who is reported to have said, Anna Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam qanata fil ruku. That Ubay ibn Ka'b, he narrated the action of the Prophet Sallallahu and he said that the Prophet, peace be upon him, he did kunut in the witr before he went into ruku. And this is mentioned um, in the narration of Abu Dawud. Secondly, it is also established in the statement of the Prophet and this is according to the first opinion, and this is in the hadith of Hassan ibn Ali, when he said, the Prophet, peace be upon um, him, taught me um, that I say the following words in witr, and it is the dua of kunut. Allah mahdini fi man hadayt, wa aafini fi man aafayt, wa tawallani fi man tawallayt, wa barik li fi ma a'atayt, wa qini sharra ma qadayt, fa innaka taqdi wa la yuqda alayk, innahu la yadillu man walayt, tabarakta rabbana wa ta'alayt. Taib, the dua of kunut, which the Prophet also taught to Al-Hasan. And here, um, the word is clearly mentioned, that he taught me to say this in regards to my witr prayer and so this is the first opinion the second opinion is that this is not established uh, from the Prophet ﷺ, that the Prophet ﷺ did kunut in the witr this is not established in the Prophet ﷺ statements nor in his actions and as for the hadith of Ubay ibn Ka'b that mentions that the Prophet ﷺ did witr before ruku then it is a hadith which is da'if and it has been declared weak by Imam Ahmad ibn Khuzayma and ibn Mundir. So this opinion says that it is not established in the Prophet statements nor his actions. As for the hadith which is used as a proof, uh, the hadith of Hassan ibn Ali, then the hadith is authentic but as for the wording kunutul witr that the Prophet taught me that I say in the kunut of Salat al witr then this part of the hadith it is not um, established to be part of the, the hadith it is not established to be part of the hadith and so this is the most authentic opinion that um, nothing has been authentically established from Rasulullah with regards to doing the kunut in witr and this opinion is the most correct opinion and Allah Azza wa Jal knows best except that for the fact that it has been established from some of the companions of Rasulullah that they used to do the kunut in witr and Ata was asked with regards to the kunut and he said كَانَ أَصْحَابُ النَّبِيِّ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهُ وَسَلَّمْ يَفْعَلُونَهُ and he said that the companions of the Prophet Muhammad والسلام, used to do this. And this has been established from Umar ibn Khattab anhuma, and Imam Ahmad and um, Abu Dawood and other hadith scholars who declare this to be authentic. And so um, some of the companions, they used to do the kunut in the witr prayer. As for the Prophet Muhammad والسلام, then this was not his practice sallallahu alayhi wa sallam um, the next issue which comes up it is the issue with regards to the kunut that if kunut is established to be a part of the bitter prayer when does one do the kunut so the scholars have differed with regard to this does the person do kunut before going into ruku or does he do it when he comes up from ruku and the reason for the differing is that nothing has been authentically established from the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu with regard to this. So we can't really say when it should be done. And so um, the scholars, they made kiyas, they made analogy upon the kunut of Nawazil. That at certain times the kunut is established and this is at times of difficulty. When the ummah is facing trials and calamities, then it is encouraged for us to perform the kunut and this is in the daily prayers, in the daily salawat, right? Throughout the five daily prayers. 
So they made an analogy on this kunut, the kunut of nawazil, which takes place at times of difficulty, and some of them has um, held the opinion that this takes place before ruku, and they use as a proof um, the hadith uh, wherein Abdul Rahman ibn Abza radiallahu anhu he said, "Salaitu khalfa Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu anhu." I prayed behind Umar ibn al-Khattab. صلاه الصبح فسمعت يقول بعد القراءه قبل الركوع اللهم اياك نعبد and so he said i prayed behind umar ibn khattab the fajr prayer and i heard that he said after his recitation and before ruku اللهم اياك نعبد meaning he opened up يعني the kunut with that supplication so he did it before he went into ruku the second opinion <coughs> is that some scholars hold the opinion that the kunut should be done after ruku and they used as a proof the hadith of Abu Huraira in the Sahihain كان رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم حين يرفع رأسه فيقول when the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم raised his head from ruku he used to say سمي الله لمن حمل ربنا ولك الحمد يدعو لرجال فَيُسَمِّيهِمْ بِأَسْمَائِهِمْ And then the Prophet would make supplication for certain individuals and he would mention their names. And so this mentions that the Prophet he did the kunut when? After he came up from ruku. And so the correct opinion with regard to this matter is that الْأَمْرُ وَاسِعُ is that the scope for the kunut whether you do it before going into ruku or after um, you come up from ruku, it is permissible to do it before or after because there are evidences to prove this. And so this we can see that sometimes there is difference of opinion in fiqh and this difference of opinion, it is tolerated. It is not like we can say that this specific action is the sunnah and whoever opposes it is not part of the people of the sunnah. Because sometimes we have this approach because our approach to learning is limited. We come across one hadith and we think that this is the only hadith on the topic. طيب. And so Imam Al-Bukhari he, uh, he named a chapter in his Sahih, in Sahih Al-Bukhari and he said Babu al kunuti qabla al-Ruku wa ba'dihi He said the chapter concerning the kunut before the Ruku and after it. And so we know that the fiqh the understanding of Imam al-Bukhari rahimahullah ta'ala, it is in his chapter headings. So this is actually his opinion. The great scholar, the muhaddith, that one can perform the kunut either before ruku or after ruku. Either before ruku or after ruku. The next issue which comes up, it is the mas'ala of does one raise one's hands in the kunut of witr. So what is recommended? What is the sunnah practice? When we actually engage in the kunut, do we raise our hands or do we not? And the correct opinion is that one raises the hands and this is the opinion of majority of the scholars because this has been established uh, in the actions of Umar radiallahu just as it has been established um, by Imam al-Bayhaqi and he declared it to be authentic and Imam Bayhaqi rahimahullah ta'ala he said inna adadan min as-sahabati radiyallahu ta'ala anhum rafa'u aydeen fil kunut he said that many companions of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu they raised their hands in the kunut so this is established to be a practice of the companions and it is most probable that the companions took this practice from Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa because they would not um, introduce new things into the religion and so he mentions that a group of uh, companions uh, that they used to raise their hands in the kunut they used to raise their hands in the kunut the next issue which comes up is when one engages in the kunut does he stick to the wording which the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu taught Al Hassan where Hassan mentioned that the Prophet also taught me that I say in the kunut, Allah mahdini fi man hadayt ila akhiri up until the end, 
Or can a person uh, add to this? Can a person add to this? And um, the correct opinion with regard to this matter is that a person can begin firstly with the praises of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as has been established in the hadith of Umar ibn al-Khattab where he opened up his kunut and he said Allahumma iyaka na'bud Oh Allah, you alone do you worship and so a person can begin the kunut which essentially is a dua he can begin it with the praises of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and glorifying Allah azza wa jal then he should send salutations upon Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and then he should supplicate with the dua which is reported and that is the dua of kunut which has been reported in the hadith of al Hasan ibn Ali radiallahu ta'ala and Huma and what teaches us this great etiquette of dua that a person before he actually supplicates he should praise Allah, glorify Allah and send salutations upon the Prophet Muhammad is that the Prophet sallallahu he heard a man supplicating in his salah فَلَمْ يُصَلِّ عَلَى النَّبِيِّ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهُ وَسَلَّمْ فَقَالَ النَّبِيُّ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهُ وَسَلَّمْ So a, per- a person was making dua in his salah in the presence of the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, and he did not send salutations upon the Messenger of Allah alayhi salatu wasalam. The Prophet Muhammad then told him or he mentioned uh, to the gathering عَجِلَ هَذَا ثُمَّ دَعَاهُ فَقَالَ لَهُ لِغَيْرِهِ the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, said that this person has been hasty and then the Prophet وسلم, called him and said to him and to others إِذَا صَلَّ أَحَدُكُمْ فَلْيَبْدَ بِتَحْمِيدِ اللَّهِ وَالثَّنَاءِ عَلَيْهِ ثُمَّ لَا يُصَلِّ عَلَى النَّبِيِّ ثُمَّ لَا يَدْعُ بَعْدُ مَا شَاعَ So the Prophet وسلم, teaches us a very very important etiquette of dua and that is that when one of you um, prays, let him begin, meaning when one of you makes dua, let him begin by praising Allah and glorifying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Thumma la yusalli alayya. Then let him send salutations upon the Messenger of Allah alayhi salatu wa salam. Thumma la yad'u ba'du ma sha. And then thereafter let him supplicate with whatever he wishes. So this is the means of ijabah to dua. Firstly, praising Allah, glorifying Allah, sending salutations upon the Messenger of Allah alayhi salatu wasalam, and then supplicating whatever your need is. About this, Ibn Qayyim rahimahullah ta'ala said, وَالْمُسْتَحَبْ فِي الدُّعَىٰ أَنْ يَبْدَعْ الدَّعِي بِحَمْدِ لِلَّهِ What is recommended for the one who uh, supplicates is that he begins with praising Allah. وَالثَّنَاءَ alay And glorifying Allah Azza wa Jal بَيْنَ يَدَيْ حَاجَتِهِ Before he mentions his need ثُمَّ يَسْأَلْ حَاجَتَهُ كَمَا فِي حَدِيثُ وَضَالَ ibn عُبَيْد And then the person thereafter asks Allah Azza wa Jal to fulfill his need which he has as has been established in the hadith of Fudala ibn Ubaid رضي الله تعالى عنه The next issue which comes up in relation to um, the Qunut does one wipe one's face after one completes the kunut or not? And the correct opinion with regard to this is that it is not sunnah to wipe one's face after completing dua because there is no proof to prove this. There is no proof to prove this. As for the statement of Umar radiallahu anhu when he said, "Kana Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam ida rafa'a yadayi fi duai lam yahut." That when the Prophet وسلم, when he used to raise his hands in dua, which is established, the Prophet always raised his hands in dua. Lam That the Prophet وسلم, would not drop his hands up until he used to wipe his face with this. This hadith, it is da'if, and many scholars have declared it to be. Um, da'if. And so nothing is authentically reported from the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, that he used to that he used to wipe his face yani, after dua. Uh, Shaykh Islam ibn Taymiyyah also mentions Wa amma mashu wajhahu illa hadith 
أو حديثان لا تكوم بهما الحجة that with regard to the wiping of the face in dua then nothing has been reported with regard to this except a hadith or two ahadith and these two ahadith it cannot be used as an evidence for the wiping of the face and so this is general um, whether it be in relation to the kunut after we compete the kunut we wipe our faces or whether it be at other times right whether it be at other times meaning uh, when we supplicate in a general manner and we implore Allah Azza wa Jal, do we wipe our faces or not? Nothing has been reported from the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu with regard to this action and those narrations that has been re reported with regard to this, it is declared to be weak by many scholars and Allah Azza wa Jal knows best. And so uh, tonight's segment covers the modality of the night prayer of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam So whomsoever wishes to establish a night prayer He should aim to establish it The way the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Implemented it And for those of us Who are not praying the night prayer We are not praying in the prescribed time The last third of the night Or as we mentioned After half of the night passes To establish it in the First or second part Of the second half of the night If we are not um, establishing this, then at least pray some part of the night prayer in the beginning part of the night bi'idhnillah so that we can say we implemented the sunnah in our lives bi'idhnillah subhanahu wa ta'ala we end upon this note insha'Allah and we continue next week insha'Allah subhanakallahumma wa bihamdika ashadu an la ilaha illa anta astaghfiruka wa atubu ilaik wa salamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuhu